A report has just been published into the conduct of the G4S group, that's the security people who deliver money, who look after prisoners, and who work for the Home Office, and, and, and of course, the Home Office. Now, you, all this goes back to the death of Jimmy uh, Mubenga in 2010. If you remember, he was restrained while a flight took off, um, and uh, he was restrained by Terence Hughes, Colin Kaler, and Stuart Trebelnig. Uh, they then faced charges. Uh, they were exonerated. They were cleared. Um, but while they were restraining this person, and he was saying, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, uh, he was being held neck, uh, sort of face down. Uh, they were making racist jokes while they were holding him down. And uh, th this was linked to Brook House, which is a, a holding centre, a sort of limbo, not a, not a prison, but it looks like a prison. And in all intents and purposes, it is a prison. And uh, it's um, a, an investigation was called after the BBC, a BBC Panorama program uh, uh, produced a um, uh, produced a broadcast about the appalling conditions in Brook House under Pretty Patel, and of course referring to that earlier problem of the death of Jimmy Mubenga and the um, exoneration of the various officers who were involved in holding him down uh, in such a in, 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 in such an aggressive way. The inquiry has been chaired by Kate Eaves and it recommends that people are only kept in detention for 28 days. I'm sure that's not going to go down well with the Home Office, which uh, is planning to expand its detention facilities to um, deal with the expanded number of migrants caught up in this country and um, expected to be thrown out. Now, part of the problem is that the uh, places like Brook House are there to deal with those people who are supposed to be leaving. Uh, who are illegal migrants, but uh, under Suella Braverman, the term illegal migrant has been expanded to mean anybody who has arrived in this country by an illegal route, even if they've claimed asylum, that asylum claim will not be processed because they have arrived by an illegal route, therefore that makes them an illegal migrant. It's important to clarify that, because there are people uh, who will um, dominate the discussion in the comments by saying these people are illegal migrants. Well, under international law, they are not if they have claimed for, if they have appealed for asylum, even if they have come to the UK on uh, by an illegal route, which is acknowledged. It's acknowledged internationally that is that it's an illegal route. And but Suella Braverman pointed out in November on November the twenty second to Tim Lawton. Uh, a fellow Conservative MP, that many people who are hoping to get asylum in this country cannot come to the UK, cannot appeal for asylum without coming first by an illegal route. Therefore, it's a catch-22 situation. Now, it may be that the UK uh, wants to claim that the only people who really claim as asylum and the only place where you can really claim asylum is in the European Union, who also can't deal with their asylum problem, who also can't deal with the, uh, with the expanded number of migrants. But uh, this, is, um, this is a reality we have to face. I think we have to face this together. It needs to, there needs to be an international agreed solution rather than... Uh, this um, uh, th th this extraordinary uh, Western standoff um, and uh, uh, and a defiance of international conventions. Anyway, Kate Eaves' inquiry exposes, among other things, a, a sort of use of R twenty one techniques. Now, I've spoke, I've talked about R twenty one techniques on many occasions before, particularly with reference to reality. TV. R21 techniques are the techniques used um, for making prisoners compliant, 
technique, uh, the R21 techniques are the techniques which often are used by torturers in a, in preparation for their torture. Their ways to make a captive um, submissive. And some of these techniques were found being used in the Abu Ghraib scandal. Uh, moving people around when they are naked, for example. That is part of this report. Apparently in uh, this detention centre next to Gatwick, uh, detainees are moved when naked or near naked. Shocking. Safeguarding is poor. Shocking. There are dysfunctional areas. Shocking. Uh, there is um, use of psychoactive drugs, uh, particularly spice, uh, tolerated. Shocking. There's evidence of a lack of empathy. Shocking. And of mocking men in their care. Shocking. And uh, there is no time limit to the period for which people can be re restrained in uh, this detention centre. Shocking. They're in limbo. Um, while their paperwork is processed, it's not a punishment. They've not done anything wrong. They've simply used the illegal route to get here because there are no legal routes. And for the government to turn around and say, oh, we've got legal routes from Afghanistan. Well, you've only processed 77 people from Afghanistan. So that's hardly a legal route. That's hardly a solution. All of this is smoke and mirrors used by the government, used by the Home Office to perpetuate and defend an abhorrent and inhuman system. Uh, this is about lies. This is not about the reality. This is The reality is a vicious culture, redolent of Abu Ghraib, um, and the very worst prisons. Uh, the Home Office... Uh, the, the Home Office is, is, is nominally in charge of this, together with G4S, um, whom it delegates to do its job. Um, and and it, it hoped this report would suggest that all the problems could be, uh, could, 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 could be dismissed as the result of a small group of um, aberrant G4S staff. That's rejected by... Kate Eaves. That's rejected. In Brookhouse, it is the culture of oppression. It is the culture of Home Office rules uh, routinely misapplied, misused, misunderstood, misdirected. Um, and this raises questions about the capability of the Home Office to further expand the use of detention and to, to then administer those facilities accordingly. Uh, this is another major strike, I think, against the Suella Braverman regime of oppression, and uh, it couldn't have come at a more timely point. Suella Braverman needs to resign. I don't understand how she can possibly continue with this litany of uh, professional reports finding against her and her department she has someone has to take responsibility for this mess otherwise we as a country must say this is the way we treat people we treat people uh worse than captive animals we treat people appallingly now is this supposed to be some sort of are, are, are we sneakily rubbing our hands uh, as members of the home office and saying well this will act as a deterrent no this is a shop window for our country. If this is the way we treat the vulnerable, um, you know, what is the point of, what is the point of civilization? If this is the way we treat people who come to us in need, the way we treat people in need is the way we are measured and judged. And it's, I mean, if you want to be religious about that, about that, it's there in the Bible. It's there in the New Testament. It's there in the Old Testament. Chesed. Charity. Loving kindness. When I was uh, poor and in need, were you there? 
no.